Okay, so good morning once again, everyone. Um, thanks so much for being here. Um, I do truly, truly appreciate it. Um, had a request from folks in RWO. We figure um, John's going to be talking about intraday trading. Figure Rick is going to be talking about swing trading. And um, the thought was maybe I should do a little bit of longer term um, type things here um, to show ways that you could take advantage of that little bit longer term. And we've got such a wide ranging topic here today, you know, uh, trend following, <laughs> um, um, setting stops and, and things like that, that we can, I can kind of go anywhere with this. But let's, um, let's talk a little bit about the longer term um, in a market. I'm just going to leave the, the diamonds up here. And you can see if we look at a weekly chart in here, there was a nice little pattern right here. This is a trap long. Um, if you need to see it on the trap chart, let's do that. There's a trap long in here on the diamonds chart. And when I trade things like this, I, I do it the exact same way as I do any swing trade, um, any intraday trade. Um, it's exactly the same. So I would look for an entry by placing an alert across this little consolidation in the chart. Sorry, I've got that set to a square. Okay, so I would set an alert across up here and I would be looking for, um, you know, just a simple, a simple entry. Show me proof that you're going to pop up through there. And then I'm going to um, calculate to my stop loss here. How much risk am I taking in the trade for that entry in the position? And I'm going to look and see how much upside potential do I have in that trade as well. And you can see up here, that was a blue sky breakout. So imagine guys picking up a single trade in here and how easy that is to manage in here to the upside until we break that upside trend. And you're literally in a trade. Let's say you got in on this candle here. You're literally in a trade for a three months the upside and making really good money on those trades. So one entry and sticking with the, that position. Now, you can trade these obviously with stock, but when you start thinking a little bit longer term, you want to think about the period of time that you're willing to hold this position if you want to do it in options. And, um, you know, if I were to go to diamonds and I'm thinking a, a long term trade now, I would probably be out here in the June's, September's. June would be a little bit short. September, December time frame. Those would we be perfect options to be looking in that longer term. And then if I wanted to take the opportunity for a real long term trend, and I do this, I come out here and I look for options in the Gen 2025s, Gen 2026s, and I look for their, those really longer term positions that I can be with the trade for a, a long, long period of time. And if you, um, you know, take a stock like um, Pfizer. A Pfizer is something I've been watching for a potential long-term trade. It's, it's nowhere near a long-term trade. But if you come all the way out here to the Gen 2025s, we've got some open interest in here happening. And if we go even further out to the Gen 26, look at how much open interest is in here. So think about this, guys. These are people that are willing to buy Pfizer and hold it right now. And they've, they've got 638 days to expiration on this trade. So you're not alone at all in these trades. 
and you get this long term perspective on a position. I'm, I'm watching plug power for an opportunity um, right now in a pullback. And you can see there is some open interest in here, 4,800 contracts being held all the way out to January 2026 in plug power. So you can certainly find good trades that you can put together for longer term positions and you're going to manage them basically the same way for um, for a trade. So let's I'm going to use plug here for example. I'm going to put a paper trade on. You can see plug, not plug, um, PayPal is what I wanted. PayPal is the one that's setting up potentially long term on the weekly. You can see right in here, upside trend. We're coming back into some support. And I am honestly waiting for a buy signal in here. Um, I have not purchased this yet. I'm still waiting for the buy to see if it will occur. But I want to show you this to show you that it's really no harder on a longer term trade to do this. So I'm going to come over here to PayPal and we're going to do evaluation of options here. And let's look out here. Let's say we wanted to go. We don't want to go super long. We want to go maybe a little bit more than a year or a little bit more than six months on a trade and look like right here 65 delta option there's 11,000 contracts here in um, PayPal so you wouldn't be the only one I wouldn't be the only one thinking that there's some upside potential coming here in PayPal let's go a little bit further let's go out here to the gen 2026 well, here people aren't having the same kind of confidence, at least yet here on this one. So I would probably have to stick with that Gen 2025 trade. Okay, and if I look through here, bid ask spread is only 10 cents. No big problem here, right? So I'm going, to, I'm going to do this in paper, so don't worry about it. I'm just going to go ahead and buy this. I'm not even going to negotiate. Well, let's see if we can get a $0.05 cent cheaper. Yeah, I think it's going to make me wait too long to maybe get a $0.05 cent cheaper on this. So we'll just cancel this order. And we'll go back and we'll buy it just at market price in here. Okay, so now we're in the trade. And I want to think about my stop loss in this. Um, and my stop loss on this is going to be probably somewhere down here below the support. Now, one thing you have to think about on a weekly trade is you got to give the stock a little bit more room to move okay and you can see I didn't draw that line very carefully I'm gonna move this down a little bit more I'm gonna give it a bit more space coming down in here to this support area of the chart so I'm gonna set a stop loss here it says 60 30 on there I'm probably gonna go 60 and a quarter on that trade for that longer term to give it enough space that it can come down in here test that trend and have that ability to bounce off of that position so I'm going to go back to that position here and all I'm going to do is right click say create a closing order okay and then I'm going to go to my order rules if anyone has not done this here's my closing order where I would set a price but I'm actually wanting to trade the option based on the stock price not the option price the stock price the technical price of the chart so i come over here and see that little gear when you hover over it everyone see that you'll click on that gear and it'll pop up what's called your order rules page now the order rules, sometimes if you haven't set this up, you click on it the first time and it may open up on a different window. So you got to find it and, and drag it over. 
um, if you want it on the same screen. And then well, all I do is my order is still a cell, okay? And I'm gonna change this from a limit to a market. And I'll explain why here, because I have no idea, nobody knows what the price of this option will be days from now if it were to trigger that stop loss. No one can give me an exact price. Nobody. Okay. I am trading based on the technical patterns in the chart. And I'm going to place this order based on those technical patterns. And so it's going to be a market order. And the market order is going to say, we're going to go good till canceled. And here's my conditions page. Okay, my rules. If I click on that, it's automatically, well, you're on PayPal, you probably want PayPal. You could base this on any, any stock condition if you chose to. The method I always pick is the mark. Now the mark is the center between the bid and ask. So what I'm trying to do is I'm already trying to mitigate. Everybody gets worried about, no, oh, it's a market order. You're gonna lose slippage on this. By setting it at the mark, I'm already trying to mitigate slippage because that's to be the center of the bid and ask. That's the mark price, okay? And I'm gonna say less than or equal to 60.25, okay? And then save this order. And by the way, guys um, that are watching this, I place all of my stop loss orders on all options this way. Doesn't matter if it's a swing trade, it doesn't matter. All of my stop loss orders are set this way. And here's one of the great reasons for doing this, guys. First off, it eliminates the emotion of you having to make that decision in the heat of the moment. Okay. When things are going bad, we've all done this, right? We've looked at a stock going down, it goes through our risk tolerance, or we even move our stop loss lower because we're emotional about the trade. We're not being mechanical, we're not being businesslike, okay? I can get a very close estimate what this is gonna cost me, very close. Okay, um, what this would cost me if that pulls back. It's a little over $2 in a, or right around $2 in the pullback. $2.50, $2.25. So the delta on this option is a 60, nope, that's not it. I can't do this right now. Let's say the delta is 70, okay, 70 delta. If the delta is 70 and we drop by $2.25 to our stop, how much are we gonna lose, guys? Minimum 140, probably 150, 155, depending on how much time has passed and how much volatility is increased or changed in that stock. So I, so I know very close estimate what my risk tolerance is on this and that's very acceptable for a tolerance of risk on the trade at least for me it may not be for you but it's not that hard to figure out not all brokerage firms have conditional orders but it's one of the reasons i stay with thinkorswim okay because I make my trading mechanical as possible. It's based on the technicals, I set the order, and I mentioned this Tuesday night, I think, but one of the things that I do, guys, is every morning before the market opens, before the market opens, I review all the trades I'm in and make sure my stops, my orders are set correctly every day before the market opens. That way, when the market opens, I'm not sitting there staring at charts that I'm already in, I'm looking for new trades. 
I'm not being emotional about those positions. I'm letting those decisions. I've already made the decision. And I don't have to second guess. I don't have to let that emotion work on me in, in trading. Okay. So it is one of the things that keeps me with Thinkorswim because it's such a handy tool and um, I use it a lot. Well, every day I use it. Okay, so I'm gonna click save here and I want you to see when I hit confirm send what this says. My order condition is PayPal, the mark price is at or below 6025. And when that triggers, it immediately sends an order to the market to close this trade. Okay? It immediately sends an order to the market to close the trade. So that's another key element in this. When you put a stop loss order in the market, a hard fixed stop loss order, market makers can see it. We've talked about um, that idea that you know market or market makers will hunt stop losses. And we know that's true. We know it's happening. Because a lot of people will group their stop losses in one place and they're really, really tight, a tight range on those generally. And we trip those stop losses. That's why you see so many tails on candles. We have dropped down, stripped stop losses, and then bounced right back up. So you set the stop loss based on the price action of the chart and give it some space, let it move. You'll avoid a lot more stop outs and make it mechanical. Okay, and so as soon as this hits 6025 at the mark, it's gonna fire that order off to the market. The market makers can't see this because this is not in the market. It's sitting on the Thinkorswim server. It's waiting for this condition to be triggered and it will fire that option, fire that order to the market to close it at the market and I get an immediate close. Okay, I don't have to make that decision again on the trade. Okay, so managing the trade is very, very simple. If I send that off, now my position has a stop, as you can see, and my order is protected in that trade. Okay, my position is protected in the trade. When I need to readjust that trade, let's say I need to adjust that stop, whether it be, uh, well, I never adjust a stop down, but adjust a stop up, you just come into that current order, right click, cancel replace order, go to your order rules, make your adjustment in price, save, send. It's really quick. Okay. Oh, that's awesome, Malcolm. And it takes your trading to that business more of that business or mechanical level in trading and it gives you the ability to manage some positions now let's talk about this for just a second this position i just put on okay i've got 1400 and change in this trade okay let's call it 1450 dollars i've put into this trade um I can't, I can't talk and write at the same time, apparently. So this is the cost that I have in the trade. Now, if you guys think about how much cash you have in your account, that's just sitting there. It's always sitting there. It's never doing anything. Okay, because we're never in swing trades. We're never in swing trades and have all of our all of our capital in the market. In fact, it is a very rare thing to find someone that even has 50% of their account in swing trading invested in the market. So 
So they got all this cash sitting on the sidelines doing nothing. So I want you to think about this, guys. Could you find some longer term trades that can utilize a percentage? Say you take 10 or 15% of your overall account that's never being used and capitalize on some trades like this. Okay? Put that money to work instead of just having it do nothing at all. Just sitting there. All right. Look for good quality patterns, the same kind of patterns that we're going to be looking for in anything else. If you guys look at PayPal, this is setting up my trap long. Again, I did this as demonstration. I'm waiting for the buy signal to show up. Okay. I'm waiting to see the buyers are going to step up in here someplace and say, hey, it's time for PayPal to go up. And that's when I'll execute the trade. Okay, And, and by the way, don't copy this position exactly because I can't tell you. Maybe I go longer term. Maybe I go a little shorter term. It all depends on what gives me the best look. And, and, and I want you to think about this too, guys, in this trade on PayPal that I just picked up, even though I just automatically took the trade, there was only a 10 cent spread. I can take long term trades and still have very little slippage in a position. The thing is, folks aren't even looking at those opportunities in a trade and now in this position guys I have over six months that I can work with this trade and try to um, have this potentially move up just imagine if this does work and for the next two or three months this moves to the upside All right, you can make phenomenal amounts of money doing this. <coughs> and the good news is when you're looking at a weekly chart, do you have to manage this multiple times a day like we do with swing trading? Do we have to even watch this during the day? No, if you get your stop loss order on, you don't. Okay. You know what the risk is. You can put the trade on. You've got excess cash in your account. And you can find these positions that can return good money and it doesn't take a whole lot of time to manage them. Yeah, um, look at them once a week. If the stop loss doesn't trigger once a week, look at them. Okay. And you can just make tremendous returns on trades like this. Now, if I'm not going to get into covered calls or anything like that today, but if you want to understand how I manage these and manage these risks on things, um, and this this right now, notice right here, this is going to report. So, I not the best entry here by any means. This is going to report here on the thirtieth. But if I have a trade that's in the in a profit, I don't even worry about the earnings because I can show you how to manage that earnings report. If you've got a profit, you just buy some insurance on the trade and how you can manage around an earnings report in a longer term trade and not have to sweat it. Not have to sweat it at all. Okay, and I'll show you one more thing here because you can do these things in combo. And let's say I, I just said, you know, if this gets up to here, I want to take the profits on it. So let's just call that 75 and a half. Okay. Can I do that at the same time as well? Yes, I can do that. 
I can come over here, I'm gonna cancel this order. And I'm gonna restructure this whole thing. All right, so I have a stop loss and I have a profit target order in the market all at the same time, okay, that I don't have to think about. First thing I'm gonna do is bring up my order to sell it. I'm gonna change this to an OCO. OCO stands for order cancels order. It actually means order cancels other, but order cancels order. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna duplicate this, this trade. Uh, in thinkorswim, you just right click and say create a duplicate order. Okay, so now I have two orders. One is going to be the stop loss. And I'm gonna go back over here and do it the same way I just did it. Okay, so there's my stop loss order. And unfortunately, that was 75 and a half, wasn't it? Okay. For the target on the trade. So now I go down to the second order and I do the same thing. To sell, it's at market, it's good till canceled. PayPal, mark price, this time I say greater than any or equal to 75.50. Save. Okay, so when I say confirm this order, you can see I have two conditions set. The condition that says PayPal mark at or below 6025, sell this option. PayPal at or above 7050, sell this option. When I um, send this off, I now have two orders chained together on PayPal. If one triggers, the other one cancels automatically. Now the reason I'm showing you this, I don't do this a lot on longer term trades, but I do this on all of my swing trades. Okay. You can use, you know, your percentage gains, Malcolm. You can do that by, um, there is no percentage gain tool necessarily. You can calculate that yourself and then just put in that price to do it as a percentage gain. Okay. Uh, Carol, good question. Carol asks, um, this only works if you're selling the same amount. Yes to do this, but let's say, Carol, you have um, four contracts, okay? You wanna do two contracts this way, okay? So you set up this to sell two contracts at 6025 for your stop and two contracts at 7050 for your profit target and then you create another order that sells the other two contracts at 6025 for the stop and maybe it's $80 for the profit target on the second two contracts I do that a lot too okay just takes another order. And then the same thing is true here, guys. Um, even if I've got these combined like this, I can still just take one order and I can go over here and I can make an adjustment to the stop loss, hit save and send, and it doesn't change anything in the other order. 
okay? The other order will stay the same, okay? So for an example, if I right click here, cancel replace order, and I change this 7550, let's make it 7525. Save, send, these orders will remain chained together, okay, in an OCO order. I just changed the prices on it. So I can just, I can adjust stops. Okay. And I can manage that trade. Okay. Guys, you want me to go into that? Um, that's really not the purpose of the class today. Um, it's more about entries. It's more about setting stops. It's more about managing the trade following trends. But if you want me to go into that, I can go into that because it's kind of a squishy thing. But I, I don't want to get off topic unless... Guys, um, let me get off topic. Um, so remember guys you can do this with a long term position you can do this with short term positions it's, it's easy to do and I manage my trades this way and I make my decisions on most of that stuff prior to the market open and that way I'm settled in my, in my mind and my emotion I'm settled on what I what I'm currently in, I don't have to worry about it. Okay. Uh, Roger, yeah, I have I've done that a lot of times for RWO. Um, maybe I need to think about doing that for a public e-learning session or something like that. Okay, but honestly, I think if you go on my YouTube channel and look at the hedging videos that I have out there, you'll find that information on those videos already on how I manage around an earnings report and I don't have to take massive risk trades. Okay. Now, managing a trade to run to the upside I get this question a lot okay when do I move my stop loss this is a mistake that most people make in longer term trading because they've been trading such short term and everybody's so jittery on a short term trade that we're constantly you know oh my gosh oh my gosh you know we're tightening up our stops and we do it way too soon too often how many in here would admit that you always end up taking your profits too soon and you take your stop losses too late too much of the time when when i am trading and it's pretty much um, in any chart that i'm dealing with depends on the length of time i'm intending to hold and the way the price moves and that's why this is so subjective um, and, and is a little bit hard to teach because if I get an extraordinary move in a stock, I might just make this, the, the decision. I'm out. You know, I, I, I don't, if it breaks my stop loss, I'm automatically out. But it may get this extraordinary move to the upside in a one day move, but it hasn't quite hit my target that I had up there. I may make the decision, wow, the market's trying to give me money quick, so I just close the trade and, and close out of the position. I don't need to adjust the stop. I don't, I don't mess with that much on gap up opens. I almost always just close the trade. Um, I put an order in before the market opens. If it's gapping up, close me as soon as the market opens. And I don't look at it again. I don't worry about it. I made money. That's what I'm here to do. And I know a lot of people struggle with that. 
Yeah, but it, it might have made more. True. Might have made more. Might have made a lot less. So I don't worry about it. The market gave me money and I'm going to take it. That's what I'm here to do is make money. So I just, I get a big gap up and I just close the trade most of the time. Gaps are gifts. Okay. Now for managing a, a normal steady uptrend kind of thing, if I had entered PayPal here and my stop loss is down here on this trade, my stop loss would still be there right now. Because I'm managing this for a longer term. I'm managing this trend. Okay, so my stop loss would still be there. And when I got buyers stepping up here, after the end of that week, then I moved my stop loss up. that makes sense I don't you know unless this met some kind of a goal or I just was trading this up to this target okay I'm trading the longer trend and I stay with the trend Okay. Now I will manage these trades when they come up here like this. You, a right way option sees me do this all the time. I sell cover calls, right? Sell calls against the position so I can hedge the pullback of the trade. But I move the stop based on the price action of the chart. Okay, now if I were, I'm gonna use this old chart because it's one I can think of at the moment. Um, take McDonald's here on a daily you can see my alerts and things here on that chart if I entered here on this trade and my stop loss is here okay even on a swing trade position this pushed up and had a couple of days of pullback and then kept moving higher I would probably take my stop after that pullback and show we, we rested a couple days and pushed up, move my stop up under here. But that stop would probably stay there. If I'm following this beautiful upside trend and I've got enough time on my options and I always go, you guys know I want about 60 days plus on the options that I'm in. So. As this pushes up and rests back, I may sell covered calls against it. But if I still have enough time in this trade on those options, my stop loss will not move until we start back up here. If I haven't triggered um, a profit target or something like that, if I'm shooting for this up here as a target on this trade, then I'm going to manage it just the way I showed you there. And by the time it gets up here, I'm closing it. Okay, so I'm following those trends to the upside. And I'll have you notice here, if I change this to a weekly here at McDonald's, You can see this really didn't provide much of an opportunity at all for a weekly trade. So there's going to be times, guys, where you will miss when you're trading weekly. They just zoom too much and it doesn't really provide you a good pattern to trade. So there's a reason to be a swing trader and a position trader at the same time. But um, I also want you to notice that there's going to be opportunities that could be a, could be had in longer term charts as well that are very easy potential entries into trades and you can hold those trades longer term so for an example here stop loss goes here and it doesn't raise until this happens okay 
and then you manage it up to your profit target or whatever it is that you're doing. I have been able to do things like this and hold trends for very long periods of time. And I also, this is a question that comes up a lot, is the amount of risk that you have to take on a longer term trade because, well, your, your stop loss is a little bit bigger, okay? But it doesn't have to be, okay? It all depends on how um, hard you look at those charts and the price patterns that you trade. So could you imagine having gotten, gotten in the QQQ right here you don't have to take a massive risk in the trade. Okay, it's, it's not required that you take massive risks in a trade. You can be picky about these trades. And the thing I will tell you is it's so much easier to see the price pattern. And once you're in a trade, you never know how long it's going to go. So notice in here, this went um, middle of May, and you probably didn't stop out over here until somewhere in this range, August. Big potential returns. And notice a trade in here, you might have got in sometime early on in December, and you're just recently getting out of that trade. Well, just like I showed you when I was looking at those options, Ron, I, I'm looking to see in those options that I've got open interest. If, if I looked at PayPal and there was no open interest or that good open interest in that PayPal, position here, I probably would have looked someplace else. Okay, so I start looking at, at different places. Where's the open interest? Okay, where's the open interest? And I start looking for um, where people are trading. I don't want to be by myself. All right, what's the time horizon I'm trying to capture? And, and if I go into charts and I see great big open interest, okay, and I get plenty of time on the trade, I'm not the only one here thinking that PayPal may come around. Okay, and I can take positions on that. So um, I'm looking at the bid ask spread. I'm looking at how much I have to pay. Um, I'm looking at how many people are in it. Okay, so I'm looking for a deal, thinking longer term. And just because I went with the January, the actual leap, doesn't mean I had to, okay? Or excuse me, this is a June. Um, I actually meant to do this one, but um, look at the, the open interest here in the Gen 2025s. That's where I should have been. Sometimes I can't talk and trade at the same time. But, and I just looked at that and thought January. Um, so I would have rather been here with all that open interest. Now, there's another thing that you can do here, guys. And I try so hard to convince people to do this. <laughs> um, because I have done this so effectively for so long. We, we have gotten into this idea that when we find a trade, we got to get all the money out of it that we possibly can right this second. But when you're thinking longer term, guys, on a trade, and you're wanting to catch that entry, I'm going to go back to PayPal. This is not entered yet, right? The, I mean... I haven't live entered this yet. It's not ready. It's close, but it's still a maybe. It's not ready. So when I'm looking at a trade like this and I don't want to lose it or forget it, I'll buy some stock. 
I can buy one share of stock, I can buy 10 shares of stock, whatever it is, it's just a little tiny position. It's just a marker in your account. Because if it's in your brokerage account, you're not gonna forget it, you're not gonna miss it. And because I review every trade that I'm in, in the morning prior to the market open, I never forget it. Okay, so if all of a sudden, it's in my brokerage account and this thing makes my move. I've got one share in it, 10 shares in it, whatever it is. Now I come in and I, and I start buying up or I load up on my option contracts or buy more stock. Okay. Longer term trades are great great ways to add to positions and really grow positions. So for example, um, I do this a lot in just buying a small starter position like that and then waiting. Waiting for that, that setup to occur in, in a trade. And by the way, guys, you can do that with a swing trade just as easily. Um, it, it's, it's not that difficult to do with just a swing, swing trade. Um, this has been split adjusted. I showed this the other night, but I, I wanted to give this as an, as an example. Um, right here, guys, this is a weekly chart. This was an entry that I made into Walmart. Okay. And you can see it's a break of a downtrend, holds a higher low, it's a 3 8 trap long, and it's a very low risk entry trade. You set a price alert, wait for that to trigger, set your stop loss. Okay. Now I went into this trade with longer term options. Okay. And one of the reasons I did, I told everybody about this when this was happening. This was after Walmart bought Jet.com and they, they all of a sudden secretly built warehouses all over the United States so they could reach everybody in the United States within, you know, um, two days. And um, they announced they were going into competition with Amazon on online sales. And I saw this pattern and I went over and bought it and I bought it with that long-term thought process. Okay. Now, if you'll notice in here, these are weekly candles. So one, two, three, four, five. We had a little bit of a bobble there. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten weeks before we had any meaningful sell-off. Okay, this moved up so much that what I did is I closed, I think I closed half or three quarters of the trade. I can't remember now, but I closed a bunch of the the position and took profits because it moved a lot more than I was expecting it to okay and then I sold covered calls on the position what was left we ranged around here for quite a while but because I was still holding that longer term trade I kept watching this and every day and I set a price alert here And when that triggered, I added back to the trade and I even added options to the trade. So this was a stock position. I added back the stock and then I added options to the trade. Okay. And I was able to manage this through all these periods of time and I got stopped out. I was in this trade all the way over here. If I shrink that up enough, a two day maybe I can shrink it up enough that you can see the red arrow up there. Nope. There's a hint of the red arrow right there. Okay, when I got out of the trade. So it was all the way over in here. This finally broke down and I was out of the trade. Okay, 
And because I had so much profit in the trade, doing a longer term position, I relaxed my stop even more. I kept relaxing my stop so that I could hold that long term uptrend. Notice right in here, that trend never broke until over here. So I just relaxed the stop and let the trade continue to work because I had such a nice profit in it. And then I just continued to manage it. Selling covered calls, sometimes I'd buy some calls, sometimes I'd buy some puts if it starts looking like it's gonna go down. Just managing the risk of that trade Managing around all of the e-learning, or not e-learning, all of the earnings um, uh, reports. Managing around that. It's easy to do when you have big profits in a trade. It's easy to just pay up a little insurance by buying some puts to protect it for a short period of time for the earnings. And manage this all the way through to a $90,000 profit. Okay, so I'm really trying to encourage folks to think a, a little bit about a few longer term positions. And it doesn't matter, you don't have to hold them that long. It takes time and experience to get comfortable with holding something that long. And you're not going to do that initially. Okay, I rarely use a monthly chart, Devin. Rare. I mean, I mean extremely rare. Okay. But if you're comfortable with a monthly chart, by all means, you, you can do the same thing. Uh, pick a time frame and trade it, is what I say. Just pick a time frame and trade the trend. But what I want you to understand, guys, is you can start these off with just single contracts. You can start these off with six month contracts. You can start these off with one, one share of stock waiting for the pattern to set up and and utilize that available cash that you have in your accounts that's never been used for anything and you would be surprised guys how much money can be made in some of these longer term trades look for good quality entries take your time there's no rush your time in finding them and I know I know once you start doing this you're gonna to want to do more of it because it's so easy to enter it's so easy to manage it doesn't take up all of your time and it just makes really really good money you're not gonna win every trade so make sure you're working hard to find good quality entries don't over risk don't overtrade these positions. Trade them small and grow into the trade. Okay? Make the trade prove itself to follow things and follow those trends to the upside. And they can go for a long, long time, or they may just go 30 days. But imagine holding a trade for 30 days without a whole lot of stress in it, or three months very common for me to have a trade that will go two to three months and you know then it just doesn't it doesn't continue to perform and I'm out one trade three months I, I, I use this statement all the time guys trade less make more okay trade less make more well you can make the decision that that's too tight for you but remember, I'm using the weekly chart, Stefan. Um, would you say if it breaks below this area here, you, do you still want to hold that trade? Or breaks below this support, do you still want to hold that trade? Because I'm trading this pattern. If the three falls below the eight, I no longer want the pattern. I'm trading this trend. If this trend breaks, I don't want the trade. Okay, I'm trading the chart. 
I'm trading the price pattern. And remember, my stop loss would probably actually be bigger, will be bigger, because who knows, this may go sideways, come down a little bit more, may go a few more weeks in here, and then finally pop a buy signal. I could get, I could have a bigger stop loss or a smaller stop loss, depending on how this finishes up. Okay, but trade the chart. Make sense? Guys, I gotta go. I think it's time for John. I hope you got something out of this. I wanna wish you all a great afternoon. Um, RWO folks, I'll see you later today. Um, be careful, be safe. Hopefully you got something out of this today and, and you can use this to make some money. Um, but I'll wish you all the best and I'll see um, RWO folks later on this afternoon. Thanks everyone, take care, have a great one.